Two of us, just the two of us, baby girl. Welcome to Nightstand. I am Barry, and this is my guy that I know, Zany Naz. I wouldn't call him Zany. It's more like uh, complaining. A, a mundane, continuous migraine. Oh, a cycle of despair that comes only to you in your nightmares. Mm -hmm. I got you. Right on. Okay. So My pleasure. Yeah, well, pleasure is all yours. So the show you're tuned into is Nightstand. Hell yeah. It's a show we do every week. There's a night there. No one gives a shit. So you hate the name. Well, I've always hated the name. I think we should spend a minute. Well, I just want to tell you that this show is the comedic equivalent between a subdermal hematoma... <laughs> And black and white photos of 1933 breadlines. <laughs> so that's where you're at. Well, I hope you're ready for a joyous ride, a ruckus look at the miscellany of our brains. Right. Because that's really why you showed up. But before we even get into what we're going to talk about today, which is a lot of whatever, you wanted to just take a minute on the nightstand name? Yeah, you've been dissing on it lately. You said, I can't believe we ever named that shit that. I once said that I wouldn't come back and do a show unless it was called Nightstand. Which is why it's called Nightstand. Right. So, and you had thought of names before, like the Velvet Bellman. Nobody knows quite where your head was at there. Well, I like to think about getting it into an elevator at a posh hotel in New York City, and the entire thing's lined with velvet, and there's a bellman there, and he's super helpful wouldn't we have to change the set like velvet curtains maybe i don't have that kind of budget actually can we get velvet curtains well you know what home goods occasionally you can get a, a funky sign that says kiss the cook oh man that's chuggy shit chuggy that's what it's called i thought it was chintzy nope chuggy i don't i don't know what chintzy is it's either. like um bless this mess oh yeah yeah no, it's no, like I, I, um it's like my other coffee is wine or something. Yeah, there's one in our kitchen that fell down, and I noticed that my wife hasn't picked it up in three years, and it says, weekend forecast, 100% chance of beers. <laughs> Wait, that is the weekend forecast. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, that fell down, and I, I've seen it. It's You can't see it anymore because it fell over up yeah. in the rafters. I see it every time I go up there to vacuum or whatever, and I never pick it up because I know it displeases her. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but, like, if it's chuggy... Does it matter that it's true? Like, oh, I don't know. I mean, hey, listen, kiss the cook. Right, right, right. You're the um, cook in your house. You get kissed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick like the, a makeout? Kick this brick. That's not one. No? Like when outside your house? When you're kicking, yeah, I know. When you're kicking it at your house and you're cooking, does your wife come in and say, love your apron, drop it? I actually just got an apron for my niece, uh, Ella. I'm very excited about this. It actually says Chef Munkle, because back in the day, she couldn't pronounce uncle, so she said Munkle Maddie. Right. Which is very cute. It's cute if you're into that type of thing. Well, cute I... if you're into cuteness. No, I'm not into cuteness. You're, you've never said anything's cute? What do I look like? Name Fucking... one cute thing. Hello Kitty. Yeah, actually, you're right. Okay. Sophie, cute. Okay. <laughs> Let's just back... You know, this isn't I say like... that every day. You know. No, it's not... Um, listen, the one thing I'm most excited about today, and we can talk about nothing forever, um, is the fact that we had guests lined up like multiple weeks in a row. Right. Christmas, New Year's, we had Paul poppin', we had Chris poppin', we had Santa on set. And getting back to our roots, I think is very important. Yeah, and I, those roots maybe rotted through the you know the earth and, you know, yeah. dried, what do they call that, the dry lake? Yeah, uh, something like that. That's how I feel... A lot of the time. It's like uh, the big branch that came down in the windstorm behind my house. Oh, that fucked your deck up. Yeah. I had, right. uh, I had that tree service over the other day, and my man was looking fresh, but his price was not. <laughs> Listen, before we get into it, so this episode, uh, you know, we usually do a topic. This is uh, going to be a series of um, what we do. We're calling it, for the sake of many reasons, which Naz will tell you about, Miscellaneous, miscellaneous Debris. debris. Now, to explain that, right. that, that was an album uh, from Primus. It was actually an EP. It was about five songs. And they had a very good cover of Have a Cigar by Pink Floyd on there, where Les was just like, What on us, big brown people don't come in it. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. You got to tell it all to all your friends. Hey, tell it all to your friends. Um, and then I said it one time on Nightstand, the original, and then somebody, I don't know who. Brett Canty. 
has recently commented saying I'll never forget that. No, I think he when, when the documentary came out, he 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 either commented or, or DM'd and and he told a story about watching the show. He was probably I want to say like, geez, I don't know, thirteen or fourteen at the time, and he said I, I'll never forget Naz talked about miscellaneous debris, and I don't understand why, and I, I didn't even know why until five minutes ago. And I never forgot that. So it's weird because, like, yeah, we had a cable access show. We were idiots. He went to Northeastern. I failed out of college. <laughs> but we made an impact on someone, and he just remembers this one line that cracks us up. Here's the thing. I sometimes in my life, I'm like, I don't know what I am as a body, as a person. You think about this, me, all the time. You're like, why? Why? But... I'm like, if some person, this gentleman, bless your comment, bless your family and your, His your relations. Brett. Brett. Yeah. Um, like him having a memory of me in his head is like, <laughs> is that my legacy? It's part of it. Is it good? Yeah, it's a great part of your legacy. But more your legacy is the picture you showed me downstairs earlier of your Build-A-Bear uh, burger. Yes. Whatever the fuck you yeah, did. Yeah, that was that impo Double this Impossible Doctor... Whopper Big Mac style where I combined, I'll show you the picture, I combined two Impossible Whoppers from Burger King after New Year's Eve because I was like, <laughs> and I needed that flesh. That's some Dr. Frankenstein shit, though. Fake flesh. I mean, they don't make this burger. He was thinking, I've got to create what my, you know what? Kudos to you for taking your vision yeah. and making that shit happen. Lange Last texted me. I... Lange texted me back and he said, "Did you yell it's alive after you did, after you built oh, it?" Oh, so Lange and I are on the same page. That's exactly right. as usual. My vision was to build a set in my bedroom that my wife loved, and I did it, and then it just fucking fell apart. I'm just waiting for the curtains, man. The velvet curtains. I can bring in some fake curtains if you want right now. Yeah, you want me to bring them in? Yeah, bring them in. All right, here we go. Just well, that's nice. Joking. So now we're back oh, here. Oh, you brought them in. Yeah, no, no, no. They're they're in front of us. Did you do the velvet bombing? Dun, 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 I will, dun, 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 but no one can dun, dun, see us right now because there's velvet curtains in front of us. What do you think about Muzak? Remember, before, before I answer that question about Muzak, I'm just gonna bring the curtains out. Oh, sure. Yeah, that would have been that's great. That's gonna be even harder. Yeah, no, it's it's a little delayed. You've got to do it, is the question. Oh my god. Yeah, no, I could do it. It's it doesn't matter. No, yeah, I remember Muzak. I worked at Mobile. Oh shit! Yeah, I heard you were me. like playing PlayStation. With you were McKay. at what Blockbuster Video or Blockbuster Ace Hardware? Video Ace Hardware, holding down that blue polo with the yellow collar, which is like I can't believe you made kids wear that. But bro, I worked in multiple locations and I rented all the new releases for free five a week. Yo, but I I'm, watched that shit at night. I walked my dog. I smoked the Camel cigarette. That's a great life back then because you're just at the end of your line of non-responsibility. That's right. Yeah. That's a great time to remember. What did you, how did you feel at mobile? Well, <laughs> you asked me earlier when I was plugging everything in, if I felt depressed <laughs> and I told you that you said anytime yes. you talk to me, I'm a little bit depressed given my psychological disorder, right. but at mobile, I felt great. So I watched the Patriots win the Super Bowl for the first time at mobile. And I know we talked about Tom Brady whenever we talked about him. Lit uh, episode. I'm not a Patriots fan anymore, but at that time when we didn't know who Tom Brady was, I was sort of. You know, whatever. The point is this. Mobile was great, but I didn't have Muzak. I had PlayStation 2. Yeah, and you were probably cranking, like, Motley Crue or, like, Ace of Base? Well, those are two very different bands. You would have been lucky if you were banging Ace of Base. I doubt you banging saw them? the sign. No, banging the sound. Okay. A couple different things you're talking about right now. Can you bang the sound, I guess, would be my next question. I can bang the sound. I bet you have. <laughs> I don't even... Here, look. Let's get back you to You hit that sound from behind, and the sound was like, yeah. She clapped. She clapped. On well, you. I clapped it. Yeah. The sound. This is some rotten humor. <laughs> anyway, let's get forward. Cut. Cut. No, we never cut. Got it. We never cut. Um, so the What Up board. What up? It's the What Up board. I wrote, oh, a, bunch, I, I wrote a bunch of shit on there earlier, uh, not thinking about what I was writing. I just, whatever came into my head, uh, throw me something. Do you want to sing the first one? A Chantilly lays with a pretty face and that big old breast. I don't even know what the words are. My backups were so bad. <laughs> you think my lead was good? I was like... All right, so we've covered that. What's next on the list? Phlebotomy. I mean, that's the process of taking blood from a body. Here's I mean, what I how tell could you. you not have that in your first miscellaneous debris episode? How could you not? The thing about phlebotomy is this. I how do you feel about blood filling your body? Sorry. Blood filling my body? Yeah. Uh, I feel fine about it. What I don't feel fine about is when they're like... Don't worry, we have some orange juice for you. And they rip the little tin foil off and they get it ready because they know I'm about to pass out. Oh, yeah. But here's what I'd tell you. If you have the stones or the gauze to oh stick a needle in someone's body and draw blood, 
don't just be a phlebotomist. Take it to the next level. Get onto that RN shit. Get onto that fucking um, that nurse practitioner shit. Get onto that MD shit. Get onto that surgery shit. No, that's a good point. Like, be better is what you're saying. Yeah, don't be a don't be a phlebotomist. Don't just be a phlebotomist. Is a veterinarian a real doctor? Yes. I had this conversation recently. Yes. Do you think like they're respected? No, I don't think they're respected. But a horse is just a human in a different form. I think horse vets are like more important than dog vets in the popular culture they're not more important horses are like um no 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 monuments to like uh genetic engineering in the way that like an arabian horse runs faster than regular horses okay i didn't realize you were a prince here's the (laughs) thing i would tell you vets that work on dogs versus vets that work on horses the importance factor is a it's a math equation. You see, more people have dogs Brilliant. than have horses. So it's yes. more important that the dogs stay alive than the horses stay alive. Big Brown, when he ran the Kentucky Derby, they euthanized his ass right on the track. Yeah. They had a curtain over him, right. which is I'm hoping I go that way. Yeah, you wish I you were I'm called Big Brown. Walking in high out school. the bar after a successful adventure, and I'm like <clears throat> and I'm just hanging on for dear life, and, and they're like, Sir, we can save you. And I'm like, No, 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 there's shoot no, me. There's no need. And my last words are Naz. Get all of my hard drives and get them in cold storage. I would shoot you in the head, cut off your feet, and make that's, my own gelatin. That's not your job. Barry gelatin. You're supposed to get my hard drives. I would never eat the fat that came out of your bone foot. Wait, wait. I thought we had like a blood pact on this. Dude, Are speaking you get- of blood, can you believe it's filled in your body? <laughs> See, I don't know what you did last night. I know you typically, you and your wife, watch these funky documentaries or it's a Chris Nolan film or Darren Aronofsky. Actually, this is a great, great segue. We started to watch a documentary about Twin Flames, which is like this crazy organization where like you meet someone and you're like, I love you. And I was thinking, and it's like they complete you spiritually. (laughs) The fuck? And so like, you know, obviously my twin flame would be you. Oh, baby. Look at. This is a G-rated program. You complete me. Oh, I was going to ask you who, who completes you. I didn't think you'd ever say me, but I, I'm glad we're here together. We should have written who completes who. It's a cult. It's a cult also. Oh. It's very dangerous. Sex trafficking, um, oh. forced labor. Uh, oh. it, I, we didn't get very far because we were stinky drunk. Well, uh, did you smoke? Yes, we also smoked. Oh. And we were in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> poof. She was doing a Marissa Tomei impression. I was like... Uh, yelling at her about putting bowls away, and the whole thing was like a dream. I don't remember actually being there, but I know it happened. Then we watched My Cousin Vinny. Well, that's all very interesting. Yeah. Last night, uh, Lori and I, we uh, went to go make a pizza. It was supposed to take 18 minutes. It's a frozen pizza. I'm hearing this story. It took over an hour, and then we went to go eat it. It was basically dough. Ew. So dude. I don't know what the hell happened, but I looked over at Lori and I said, my dear wife, what happened? And she was like, I don't know, but I got to go get some more grapes. Did she get those like fish goblets of the red, the red bean? She was drinking red wine. Yeah. And every time she came back from the kitchen, um, something would crash. Oh, so I kind of knew like something feelings. fell down and then I'd hear her go. Bah, bah, and I, it was like Charlie Brown's teacher, right? She would make a noise. I didn't really get it because I'm right. sort of deaf. <laughs> but I thought this is all leading towards this amazing pizza. Yeah. And then it came out and out. while it was good, yeah. it was soft. So the first thing we have to talk about is you downstairs when I was doing something here for the show, you were saying like, I like convection bake better than regular bake because it works better. Please explain. Okay. So convection bake is when a fan pops off. Oh yeah. Blows heat at a high uh, fucking death ray through your turkey. Whereas a conventional bake is like a soft happy muffin with two googly eyes and a smile and he rise slow and nice so easy flowing i would say that if you were to categorize nightstand as an oven setting mm-hmm. you would be convection right. and i'd be conventional i love to shoot my heat through things that's right through sound well i don't know if remember it's that joke s- oh no i don't <laughs> it's it's before <laughs> it's way before it's when you were banging sound Oh, oh, right, right. The Ace of Bass. I yeah, turned that Ace bitch out. Oh, my God. That Sound song is so good. Sound has some gorgeous long locks of red hair. Oh, God. You know what? What? I could go on about sound all day and those luscious powdered breasts. Yeah, we're not singing I Saw the Sign. Sorry. Yeah. Ace of Bass, not as good as ABBA. <laughs> ABBA is that dancing queen. She was only 17. She was only 17. Speaking of that, Stephen Hawking on Epstein's Island. Can we I all know. Can we all talk about but how does that work? The craziest thing is, is that, you know, I didn't know this story. This until better be the craziest thing. It is crazy because the Simpsons have predicted all these things. And then they have a screenshot today on Instagram of 
Stephen Hawking flying away with Lisa in this little like helicopter wheelchair, and the caption is like, "No, Lisa, no." Oh dear. Do you know what they would call you uh, if you were a porn actor? Big Brown? No, they would call you Fat Groaning. Ooh. Got you there. Anyway, we're going to get to our segment, which is all NASA's deal. So oh, shit. Is that wanna, now? Yeah, you want to introduce it? Okay, guys. If you haven't figured it out. All right, camera one or two. What am I? Camera one? Am I camera one? We have one camera. No, but like when you do the whoop, whoop, whoop. I know. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, you just do it. Okay. <laughs> Hello. My name is Naz, and welcome to Fat Ones, a show where a show that asks hot questions with even hotter wings. My guest today is Barry Ruda, host and creator of Nightstand. No awards to his name, but he holds down a steady job barely, and often looks fondly back on high school as some of his proudest moments. Barry, welcome to the show. That was sort of bullshit at the end there. What? My proudest moments in high school? So how are you with spicy foods? I'm pretty good with spicy foods. You are? So you no, I, you I can... mean, if I'm on the Prilosec, which I am. Okay, um, you know, I, I have three questions to ask you, and we have three wings of three ascending hot heat levels. I've seen okay, what hot the, ones. I've seen hot ones. Before. The incomparable Sean Evans, I love you. Hit me in my DMs. Oh, let's wait. collab. Let's do something. Yucky. Get me on that show. I think you should have nightstand on hot ones. Yucky. That would be so dope if we could do the ten wing challenge together. We might be going beyond our holding reach. hands like twin flames. Oh. Okay. So, um, we're going to take a bite of our first one. That's the regular buffalo sauce. How does this work? Now, I, can't, I can't reach that. You don't have to eat the whole thing if you don't want to. The buffalo I can, I can eat, for okay. sure. Yeah. Give to me. Ooh, that's like... I'll, I'll wait for you. Is it wet? It's yeah. kind of wet. It's wet. And wow, it's warm. You got those napkins, producer? Okay. Yeah, my All right, Straight up. That's, that's good. good. Yeah. That's their new hot sauce, by the way. Go to heatness.com. Buy some for Sean Evans and comment. Get those nightstand boys on the show. And then also Venmo us. If you're watching this, a dollar's not going to break you. Please send us a dollar. So this is how this show works, Barry. I'm going to ask you three questions. Okay. Okay. What is bravest moment when you were pure courage? Well, that's tough to say. I mean, I've been pure courage so many times. Uh, a lot of cowardice, but bravest moment? I once walked into a pizza place. Well, I shouldn't say that. I walked into a restaurant. And, uh... I that saw, sold pizza. Right. And I saw this, uh, I'd say a young thing. Ew. <laughs> so, but she had her, the back of her shirt was all sliced up in a oh, fashionable yeah. way. It's the rag slice. Yeah, that was revealing a tattoo. And there was a very large, like, turn up on her head, like, way up. It's so vivid. And um, although she had dark hair, she had piercing blue eyes. And um, so instead of just, like, you know, settling into a beer... I walked right up to her and I said, hey, I, I know you, you got a lot going on, but I'm Barry and I'm going to sit at the bar and I'd, I'd love to talk to you. Okay. So you were introducing your your visceral presence to the to the club. And I was, it wasn't a club. Uh, and I was like, you know, let's like talk. Wow. Yeah. That is courage. And it, you know, there's a story. Did where, you feel like shivery? Like you were doing something above the bounds of what you could possibly honestly, do? Honestly, I was so high on drugs oh, and shit. alcohol that I barely remember it. This kid in Oxy's is like a, like an Oxy Clean commercial. But He's then like, it developed into a relationship where she had a kid and shit. And then one day I was in the bathroom doing drugs and her kid walked in. And then we didn't have a relationship anymore. Oh, wow. That's that story. Okay. Um, are you ready for the second wing? Sure, yeah. Are you going to do the whole thing again? So, sorry to my, my wife, by the way, who's in the room. But I had, you know, I got to tell the stories. Oh. She seems really thrilled. You did. So you ready for the second wing? Uh, oh yeah. This is the Verde. Um, it's it's. So this was two out of ten. The middle one's five out of ten. Do I eat the whole thing? Okay. Should taste like beans. Why does it taste like beans? Another good tasty bean hot sauce, and you can tell it's a little it bit of like a grower. I don't feel that shit at all. It tastes like bean curd. Are you a grower or a shower? I'm both. You're both? Yeah. You grow and you I show? I show this shit, and by the time they have even a chance to look, I slap that bitch down the waterfall. Man, you make me sick. Cool. Girl, you make me sick. Uh, second question. Right. Where do you pull your artistic inspiration from when editing the show? Honestly, I try to think about what makes me laugh, which is usually the most raunch form of comedy. And then I try to in uh, well the other thing I've just said is I don't a lot I don't have a lot of time to do this which is why you get two D edits, you know you got giant nickels, I love the giant nickel. You got you know fucking tomatoes hitting us in the face with no reaction mm. like 
So I it's love just, that. Yeah, it's weird. I also love the um, the communist march or the fascist march. Right. Marching soldiers. I've done so that. So I I've just try to figure out like twice. what works well, what works quick. But I got to get episodes out, so I don't have time to be truly artistic. Also, I'm not an artist. I'm a drunk. Let me tell you, when you send me these drafts, I'm truly affected. Um, sometimes for the positive, sometimes for the negative, but, uh, I send notes over to Barry hmm. and, uh, he'll take those into advisement. Sometimes he blatantly ignores them. Um, so you're watching a subpar show, but thank you for watching it. I have to ignore some of those notes. Um, they're, so are you ready for the final dab? They're chuggy. Yeah. So, oh, so, but it's already dressed. This is how this works. Sean Evans. I, I know about Sean Evans. He looks like, uh, my buddy Cooper. I mean, incomparable hot ones. Okay. We had an extra dab if you feel so courageous. Are you gonna do it? Of course. Uh, then give it to me. Okay. You know, I'll film just do a forever. little dab. Film is forever. Film is forever. You don't want to be a coward here. Mm -mm. Oh, it's not a good idea. Oh, I wouldn't put the whole thing in my mouth. I'm going to take a small bite. Okay. I'm just gonna dab them up. Well, that's what you're supposed to do, right? That's sort yeah. of. Yeah. It's just an extra little dab. Okay. I mean, we have different tastes and shit. So, go ahead, B. All right, man. Hey, cheers. Oh. All right. Well, despite your wife's assessment, I don't think that tastes like poison. It's got a little bit of a. It's fruity, gonna start to build. It's got a little bit of a fruity hit. It's hot. I get Wait, it. Is it growing? Yes. Or showing? Oh, dude, that's hitting. Okay, my last question while you're getting heated up. If you were Abraham Lincoln, what would be the beginning of your Gettysburg Address? Probably four score and seven years ago. Ah, uh, dude, you can't steal his. But if I'm him, that's mine. No, you're you as Abraham Lincoln. So when did you deliver that? Was that was that the uh, at the end of the Civil War or when they abolished slavery? That's pretty hot. Um, at the, at the end of the Gettysburg War, he didn't give battle. The, the Gettysburg. No, the Gettysburg Address was at Gettysburg, I think, after the war was over. You're not answering the question. Oh my gosh. What would my address be? And listen, we killed a lot of ourselves trying to prove some bullshit. We're somehow achieved what damn motherfuckers over there across that shit in Africa have done for one another. Yo, listen, this shit's over. We gotta everyone just take down their fucking pants. Lose the flag is what I'd say. Let's drop the sun. Let's turn out the lights. Keep going, dude. I'm inspired. If you old, feel huh? young. If your mama talking shit, Learn from her. If your poppy going for a dip, swim with him. Is your tongue still like, um, what's your tongue doing right now? No, it's hot. I, I don't get me wrong. Like, this is not something I would eat. I'd never put it on in food, but it's not. I don't think the beer's helping me. Oh, I didn't even know we had beer. I thought this was milk. For once, I wish this actually was milk. Thank you for watching, Hot Ones. You got through the wings of death. I'm so happy for you. You're a great con creator of content. Okay. And I'm so proud every time to call you my co-host and creator of the show. It's in my esophagus. For our thanks, this camera, this camera, this camera. Tell everybody what's going on in your life. What's going on in my life? That's right. Uh, well, let's see. I've got to... You gotta uh, look into the camera, dude. Oh, hi. Yeah, so I, I'm going to try to be brief. Not a lot. Um, I've been wearing the same coat for 12 years. I've got shoes that... Are made of recycled plastic bottles. You still wearing those things, dude? I'm dangerously low to uh, going negative in my checking account, and um, I'm probably gonna vomit in about thirty seconds. I'm always so interested to see this show because, like, like what are they actually feeling? Pete Davidson almost legitimately died on the show. DJ Khaled got through three wings out of ten and stopped. Yeah, like it is punk. hot. I didn't eat the whole thing. I took a bite. You gotta be careful around your eyes too. I haven't touched a damn thing. Look, in closing, I'll tell you this. Naz wanted to do a segment with hot ones, fat ones, whatever it's called. I thought it was great with the questions, the intro. I said no. It happened anyway. But I can tell you that the rest of my evening is now going to be seriously detrimented by what we've done here. You asked me what my tongue is doing? What is my tongue not doing? This shit has a baby arm that's punching me in my molar. You weren't affected by this? What did I just say? I don't even get it. My tongue is growing an oh, yes. arm and, yes, hitting me in the teeth. So, look, I have GERD, but I want to let you know that we're going to be okay. I thought this was a great episode. It's fine. Let's let's have a... Oh, you don't have any beer left, huh? Is the timer off? I do have a beer. You want to chug? Yeah, just... Uh, hey, guys. Yeah. Thank you for watching Fat Ones and Nightstand. Um, <clears throat> it's a delight to do this show every week. Welcome back to the two-person format. And uh, 
I. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Donny Gelton. Donny Gelton and, uh, you know, Bang Sound. Okay. I don't know. That's fine. That doesn't make a difference to me. I just have to get ready to sit down. I was thinking about it, but I don't know what. Oh, we're trying. I don't know. All right. Just a two How's the Dunlap us. situation? First, I'll do a lean forward. How's the lean forward look? That's sick. How's the lean forward look? Sickening. How's the lean back look? So pop. Come on. So pop. Come on. That shit's so daddy. <laughs> Talking shit. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, that'll be fine. Yeah. I don't remember what this is like. Well, you're here now. Your mic's good? I'm a we'll bit see. pissy, if I'll be honest. Yeah. You're giving me <laughs> wicked, wicked vibes. Mm. We got a 25-er. All right, yeah. Ready to go. Okay. In three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs>